Hey guys, Delia here. So today's video will be a sort of a snapshot of a life of a landscape designer. And if you are new to my channel, hi, my name is Yulia and I'm a landscape designer in Northern New Jersey. Um, and at the busiest time of the year, I would say I have anywhere from 10 to 20 projects running and they're all in different stages of design or installation. So it's a lot, a lot of different projects, a lot of different moving parts, but I would say late fall and beginning of winter, most of my projects are in the design phase is when I am in my studio, uh, surrounded by beautiful books and ideas and photographs. I am uh, doodling and deciding on what to create in somebody's garden. So it is very exciting for me to um, be in this creative environment. But sometimes we also do installations in late fall and winter. And we do plant as late as Christmas. Uh, we don't do like a lot of construction uh, this late because like concrete and moisture don't mix really well. So we avoid doing any of the construction this time of year, but planting wise, uh, we plant until the ground freezes solid. Um, and we've had actually really good uh, experience with plant establishment when they're planted in the fall, late fall, and pretty much, like I said, all the way until Christmas. So uh, right now I have a couple of projects that where we, um, the design phase was done and we were doing installation and I will tell you about one of those projects today and all the things that could go wrong <laughs> in the life of a landscape designer and I would say any business owner. So anyway, this project is just fantastic. Uh, it's a very large property. It's two acres. The homeowners are amazing. It's a beautiful family and um, the client, she really understands the importance of native plants and actually I think that's how she found me. So it's like match made in heaven. Um, so we decided for our planting palette, we're going with like as many natives as possible. So like 80% natives, you know, my general rule is about 50% natives, 50% ornamentals. So um, the design phasing i broke up the design phases um because for any of my uh, projects i always suggest that you have your master plan and then you execute it in phases because otherwise the project becomes incredibly daunting and even for a homeowner if you do it yourself just take it small step at a time trust me it's just so much easier and so much more um, rewarding when you have something small done, like you, it's done and then you can move on. Anyway, so what we decided to do this fall is to install an orchard of 10 fruit trees um, with a lot of flowering bulbs um, so they can start naturalizing. And we also decided to install foundation plantings around the house. Um, and I, by the way, I will post all of the plants that I uh, included in this project down in the description below so you guys can reference if you're interested in um, using any of these plants because I highly recommend. I did a lot of research on like what could go there. So um, we had a contractor lined up and everything was great. I bought fruit trees that were really healthy and very mature so they can start fruiting within the next couple of years. Uh, we put in the uh, bulbs, almost 200 of them, so they can start naturalizing. And as for foundation plantains, I had these grand plants of these beautiful native kind of like a meadow with like a larger flowers like hydrangeas and some um, boxwood, um, just like a loose kind of hedge. Um, to anchor it around the house and the contractor planted the boxwoods and the shrubs that I specified and it was just like we had the foundation done. As for the perennials, because there were so many natives that I specified for this project, it's 
well, first of all, it's hard to find any plants right now in the nursery. And second of all, even in the busiest time of the year, natives are hard to come by. So a lot of times I actually order natives from online. I will also post links to those uh, websites down below. So I ordered 200 perennials from one of the wholesalers and they were supposed to come on the day of planting uh, when the contractor was there and the contractor was like available only for two days limited number of days and that was like it that was one shot and guess what the plants did not arrive on time and they did not arrive the next day or the day after and I felt awful like we didn't know whose fault it was and like I was not at the point where I was blaming anybody the company or the shipping company like something had to be done so I just told the client that I'm going to plant those perennials myself when they come and I never plant stuff myself um, it's always outsourced to the contractor so um, long story short perennials came yesterday and that would not have been a problem but we had a really bad ice storm <laughs> yesterday <laughs> and i um you know i made a promise so i had to plant them so the as i mentioned we plant um stuff here in my zone this northern New jersey zone six it's kind of like some pockets it's zone seven so our winters are interesting. They're very mild until like January, well into January. And then they continue for a long time, like well into March. So it's kind of like they shift toward the spring rather than like they start early. So our ground is not frozen for a long time and we are able to get away with planting plants. So anyway, I will show you when the plants came, how I unpacked them, and how I planted them. All right, so first of all, you guys can see, <laughs> this is all ice. Look at this. There's, everything is iced. So not only do I have to cut through this tape, Also, ice. Look at this. from this company they are very well packed okay. I just love unboxing all right what is this so good oh that's uh, catnip yep that's nepeta right here there's another cardboard. All right, this is a grass of some sort. Here, another cardboard. They pack a lot of things in one box. Uh, all right. Three, three trays. And this, there's no label here. All right, so I unpacked three boxes right here. So the contractor did a really good job outlining the beds and mulching them. And of course, planting the shrubs. Everything looks good. And here's my annoying companion. 
It's being super annoying. <laughs> oh, and the plants came all the way from down there, you guys. Uh, I had to carry them up here because the shipping company didn't want to carry them. And here I just wanted to show you um, some of the trays. So this one, I think it was a purple dome aster. And this is Amsonia. Yeah, Amsonia Hubrici right here. So I laid all of them out, you guys, and there are 175. Yeah, 175 perennials here. So um, as you can see, even without them being planted, there are groupings of like fives and sevens because I want them to be like big swaths of the same thing. Um, this area is a bit problematic. I have a sprinkler system going on here, so I kind of have to think about what, what to do here. But um, this right here is a purple love grass, which is really adorable grass for like the front border. And uh, there are penstemons right there, beautiful winter color on them. And of course, everything is iced right now. It looks gorgeous. Those little ones are echinaceas. And as you can see, the beds are mulched and they're mulched thick. So that could be a bit of a problem when I'm planting, but I will show you how to deal with that if let's say you have to plant in a bed that has been mulched already. So, but all of them are laid out. All I have to do is plant. All right, if you have mulch beds, you can pile the mulch aside, dig a hole, uh, put your plants in the hole, and then you can cover them back with the mulch. All right, this section is all planted, you guys. So happy. I'm just gonna have to rake the mulch again. I hate looking at my steps all over here. But um, this is done right here. So happy. So by the time I was done with about three quarters of the perennials, there were snowflakes coming down and I was like, what is this? This was not supposed to happen. It's like there was no snow in the forecast. But just in case, like I picked up my pace and I think I planted the rest of the plants in about 10 or 15 minutes. And by the time I was done, the snow was coming down so hard. It was like a full on squall. And uh, all I could do is like clean up and like gather all of my tools and all of the plastic pots and like put them in the car and drive away. <laughs> it was like the strangest day, but Looking back at it, um, I think like the snow actually helped insulate plants a little bit more. Um, but um, in the next 10 days, uh, I looked at the forecast and our weather is going to be really nice. It's going to be in the 50s and in the 40s, which is very mild. And I think the plants will have their chance to kind of establish and root in, root in a little bit more. But all in all, I think it was really wonderful day i kind of enjoyed the gardening part of it and also this garden is just going to be beautiful i cannot wait to see it in the spring um, and i cannot wait to see it mature i think it's um going to be one of the best gardens like incorporating all of the native plants and the way they play with each other i can't wait to uh, give you guys the tour um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and it wasn't like all over the place and as per usual if you have any questions let me know and I'll see you next time.